Hey everyone, this is Kara Crossley Brindle. Welcome back to the channel. A new face on the channel. Always excited to have new guests. I have Faith with us today. Hi Faith, how are you? Hi Kara, I'm good. How are you? Doing awesome. Well, like I said offline, I'm so excited to have you here. And I, I imagine most of the clinicians will also be excited because we are here to talk about music therapy, music psychotherapy specifically is what you do. I feel like we're all going to learn a lot. So before we even jump in, what do you want to share with our audience of who you are and what you do? Yeah, so my name is Faith. Um, I am a licensed professional counselor and board certified music therapist. I have been in private practice in Longmont since about 2015, mm -hmm. where I work with teens, young adults, middle-aged adults, and older adults. Um, although since the pandemic, I've primarily been working with teens, young adults, and middle-aged adults, a lot of whom um, are neurodivergent in some way, mm -hmm. whether that's autism, ADHD, trauma, history, substance use. Um, but prior to going into private practice, I worked for several years as a hospice music therapist wow. and worked in elder care, memory care, leading music therapy groups, and have also worked in early childhood special education amazing like so you've like kind of worked the whole lifespan of where people would see music therapy as beneficial how did you get started in music therapy if you don't mind me asking yeah well my bachelor's is in vocal performance and vocal pedagogy uh -huh. and my senior year I had to perform a senior recital and I realized during the preparation of learning music connecting to pieces and having the courage to get on stage where there's nothing to hide mm. behind and to be able to convey the power and the meaning of the music to an audience. I, I realized I was more interested in that than the performing aspect. And I wanted mm. to help other people, especially women, learn how to feel comfortable and confident in using their voices in whatever way that means or meant to them. Mm -hmm. And so my voice teacher at the time had a brochure for the transpersonal counseling psychology music therapy program at Naropa. And when I read the description of what music therapy was from that perspective and uh, learning about a program that recognizes the multi-dimensional aspects of being human, I knew that was what I wanted to do. So mm. I beautiful. I applied to Naropa, finished my training there, learned that music therapy is more than what I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and I've been I've been doing it ever since. I graduated in 07. So mm -hmm. I've been in the field for seven, 17 years. Amazing. Oh, so cool. So I know there's probably, as you kind of already alluded to, this the music therapy itself is applicable to lots of populations for lots of different things. Can you kind of highlight some of the populations? I know you mentioned neurodivergence and trauma. Any other populations you want to name where people, clinicians, might be like, this is a referral source uh, for the clients they serve? Yeah. So I guess some other areas that, um, music therapy could be beneficial would be um, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Mm. It provides a, a way for, for people who maybe have challenges with communication to be able to express themselves and to be able to feel and be part of something greater than themselves. Um, I think that's one of the really powerful things about mm. music is how how it can help us gain a greater sense of who we who we are. Um, individuals who have neurocognitive challenges or mm. neuro um, oh words uh, <laughs> people <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> that people, <happens. laughs> people with dementia Parkinson's. Uh, they also can benefit from music because 
music is a is a whole brain activity. When we engage in music, all the networks in our brains get activated. And so for someone who has difficulty with speech or has difficulties with memory, music taps into those parts that maybe are still healthy and allows them to be able to express themselves to recall memories. I have an experience when I was working in hospice, working with a, a woman with dementia who, according to her son, hadn't spoken in like two years. Mm -hmm. And when I started singing her favorite gospel songs, she would sing along with me. Aww. And after, after finishing the song, she spontaneously was able to say that she enjoyed it and to mm -hmm. acknowledge how it had impacted her. Fortunately, her son was also there to witness that. And he was just like, oh. goosebumps over here. Oh my gosh. What a powerful yeah. story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You helped me see my mom again. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. Oh, I have so many questions. Okay, let me try and or like ground my thoughts <laughs> yeah. here. So in my true ignorance, I don't know a lot about music therapy. And I imagine a lot of people on this channel also have similar questions. So the, the most pertinent question that's popping in my mind right now is, is what this truly looks like. So you just gave an illustration of, you know, a woman who hadn't spoken for a while, and then you start singing and, and, and I'm assuming playing some music and or just singing. Um, but like for someone who's like, I want to refer clients to music therapy, what should they expect or what could the client expect from coming into the work? Yeah, that is a great question. <laughs> it's probably loaded, I, I'm sure. <laughs> as I often say in my consult calls with people, how it looks really varies on mm -hmm. who the person is, what their, what their needs are. But uh, in general, what a person could expect would be to have opportunities to actively make music. Mm -hmm. So for example, behind me, I have a keyboard. Next to me, I have a guitar. I have ukuleles, a variety of different percussion instruments, mm -hmm. some that allow for melody and harmony to be created, some that are just purely rhythmic, but all of which are easy to play or able to be adapted so that it's easy to play because not everybody identifies as a musician and you don't have to be a musician to benefit from music therapy. Mm -hmm. So in the case of if we're actually making music, that might be done as a way to support grounding and resourcing, helping a person to become more present in the in the moment to be able to reconnect with their body because mm -hmm. if they're playing an instrument there's also that tactile aspect to it where you could feel the instrument vibrating right it could also be a way to help people who are very stuck in rational logical mind or anxious mind to be able to get to the heart of the matter and to be able to connect with underlying emotions that is for whatever reason is difficult to communicate. Wow. Then in other instances, I may use recorded music. So I often will use recorded music in ways to help people develop mindfulness or to lead them on guided meditations to be able to either see future possibilities for themselves mm. to be able to, you know, move out of feeling where they are now and to be able to get what it is that they need, whether that's to feel safe or to feel connected. Um, but because I work with a lot of people who are neurodivergent in some mm. way, you probably have encountered this as well. Some people who are like that just cannot tolerate silence and just mm. sitting. So I find that having the the music provides a container that makes it tolerable for them to be able to just be 
with themselves yeah. and to notice their breathing. Absolutely. Well, it makes me think of the the song Weightless by Marconi. Of like they said that that was the song that was supposed to like quiet nervous systems and people are using it for sleep. And so I've prescribed that to clients before, but I feel like you're talking about like next level of like, this is custom to them. This is very much what they need in that moment because it's not a one size fits all. Is that accurate to reflect that back? That is very accurate. There, you know, it's like music is more than just the notes, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's the social cultural piece to it. And there's the ways in which we individually identify with music, which especially with teenagers as they're going through the development of their identity, they really connect to music. But because there are all these layers to what music is and the meaning that we derive from it, um, I think it's important to remind people that there's not a good type of music or a Mm. bad type of music. It's really individualized. A colleague had had an experience where she had a client teenager who was hospitalized and was Mm. really agitated, but they weren't able to communicate with him. And so the doctor or someone had suggested, oh, let's put on some classical music because it's classical soothing. music, exactly. <laughs> but it was actually more agitating uh-huh. for mm-hmm. the kid. And then when she was informed of what was happening, she was like, well, what kind of music does he, does this per- this kid like? And they said, heavy metal. So yes. <laughs> Let's play it. <laughs> and mm-hmm. he, and he was better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I have people in my personal life who uh, they like heavy metal or scream on music or whatever you want to call it. And that like, that calms their nervous system. Whereas it like ratchets up mine and I'm like, no, we're not the same. Um, mm-hmm. So I was smiling thinking of them fondly. I'm like, yeah, I've seen this in real time where I'm like, if that's calming to you, great, but that's not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> please put so on headphones yeah yeah <laughs> fascinating so again in ignorance work is, is sound baths part of this for you or is that completely separate outside of music therapy because I know both have tones and like mm-hmm. I've had the experience as a client once of sound baths that like opened up my throat and like I felt like I could speak better after which is kind of fascinating to admit in this video um but what are your thoughts <laughs> yeah I would say like in a strict um, a strict sense, the more of the sound healing practices are different than music therapy. Yeah. However, gotcha. because of my background and training at Naropa and as a vocalist who mm. is also just interested in spirituality and the the impact of spirituality on mental health, and I, I do incorporate aspects of sound sound healing in my work like uh when I do voice work with people Mm. um uh we'll talk about how there are some sound healing practices that identify certain vowel sounds as aligning with the chakra system that's right so talking Mm -hmm. about that and working with them on identifying okay where where would you like to focus your sound right now? Here are some vowel sounds. Let's tone mm. and just notice what you feel in your body. I also have a crystal singing bowl. And so sometimes wow. clients will want to play that or they'll want to receive that. So I'll play that for them while they just sit and immerse themselves in the sound. Wow. Yes. I feel like there's so many applications and possibilities from this very short little look at what you're talking about of how this works. So cool. Um, okay. Is there a population this doesn't work well with? I guess I'm hearing lots of people it works well with individualized. Is there any population where it's just like "Mm," the data or your lived experience, like not a great fit? I don't know if I could say that there's a population that it doesn't work for. I think it is really more individualized. And Mm -hmm. well, actually I take that back. So someone who 
maybe has hearing issues or the way that they process sounds mm. that might not be a good fit for them uh, okay. because it can be jarring and disorienting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because like if music doesn't sound like music to you, then. <laughs> yeah, like nails on a chalkboard. Uh -huh. Exactly, Got exactly. <laughs> um, but I do have colleagues who, who do work in like inpatient psychiatric units. Mm. Um, and that helps working with people who, have a history of psychosis, there are things to take into account in terms of how you engage them in music. So like mm -hmm. you wouldn't engage someone who is in that state of mind in like guided imagery where, you know, right. it's already going into unre unreal places. Yeah. Um, so all that to say, I don't think there's one specific population, it really is individually based. Gotcha. And so I'm hearing with that in mind, individual or group work is a possibility because you mentioned you've done groups before. Mm -hmm. uh, so for clinicians who are like, this is amazing, they're curious, maybe they want to experience themselves or have clients they want to refer, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, so my website, well, my practice is called Soundwell Music Therapy in Longmont. And there's information. My website is www.soundwellmusictherapy.com. Um, and there they can read more about the individual counseling music psychotherapy services I provide. They can learn more about groups that I offer. Um, later on July 27th, I'll be teaching an online class that's worth six CEUs um, geared towards behavioral health professionals so that they can learn more about how music can impact mental health and well-being and can get some tips for how they might want to incorporate some music in their awesome. work with clients as well. Yes, um, we, we definitely want links for all those things, including the CEs to be like, let's teach other clinicians. How cool. Thank you so yeah. much for doing that for our community. Yeah, you're welcome. And I'm have I'm on Facebook, Soundwell Music Therapy, um, and Instagram, Soundwell Music Therapy. I have nice. a YouTube channel as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, more channels. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes, so they're in all the places. <laughs> yeah, I can be found in all those places. I have not ventured into the land of TikTok because I just mm. gotta I got to set some boundaries for myself yep. in terms of how I feel deep that. into the social media <laughs> rabbit hole I go. I totally feel that and can relate. Absolutely. So if there was one final thought for listeners or viewers of this video around music therapy and, the, and I want to say the magic of, of music therapy, I don't know why that's coming up that way, but if there was one final thing for them to think about knowing the clinicians and potential clients are watching, what would that thought be? I guess I would want people, I would encourage people to be aware of how they're impacted by music. So if you're it's listening like to music in the car, yeah, notice, notice how it makes you feel. Do you feel more relaxed when you listen to it? Do you feel agitated when you listen to it? Do you feel indifferent? And just track what your experience is so that you can listen to music more intentionally. I love that. Yeah. I'm already thinking of like playlists and like intentional songs people picked. Like I want to cry. I want to laugh. I want to like have an anger moment. I'm also thinking of my sister. She used to play Lincoln park songs when she was upset. So we all had a cue, like leave her alone, stay out of her room, like blast it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if she'll watch this, but sorry, sis, that's your, <laughs> that's your stuff. Um, but that totally makes sense of like certain songs and how they like impact us and, and resonate versus, oh, this is the nails on the chalkboard feeling. Cause I have that even with, with my spouse where it's like music playing. I'm like, please turn it off. Please change the song. And he's like, why? And I'm like, cause it feels agitating. So mm -hmm. I feel very seen right now and so happy to have gotten to know you. I'm excited for other people to get to know you and take your course, your training. So I'll make sure to put all the links below for our watchers who are like, Hey, 
I want more information on faith and, and the music therapy, psychotherapy that you do. Thank you, Faith, for being here. I appreciate you. Yeah, you're welcome, Kara. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, hopefully you can join us again and show us some of that magic. I'll make sure your YouTube channel is also linked here so people can check it out. Viewers, stay tuned for more videos. We'll see you next time.